Good morning, friends. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Saturday. It is time for our daily devotion. And so I want to invite you to come and join me, if you would please, for our devotion time. I'm going to watch the old Facebook feed here, see who all says hello this morning. It'll let me know if you uh, are watching, and it'll let me know your comments. So please leave a quick hello, if you would, please. would love to hear from you. If you're watching this later on, don't forget to also leave your hello. would appreciate hearing from you today. I know all of us are probably getting ready for holiday stuff, so been a, it's a busy time of the year. Good morning, Jack. Great to see you. Hello, Barbara and Chris. Good morning to both of you. Hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you, too. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Great to see all of you. Good morning, Barbara Paddock. Great to see you. Today was leaf day for me, so I've been out to uh, the Kansas City um, organic, Missouri organic spot that's off of Raytown Road in 470. I have taken my 15 or 16 bags of leaves out there, and I probably have another 20 bags worth of leaves that still need to be mulched up and put in leaf bags. Boy, howdy. You gotta love living in parts of the city where there's really big, tall, beautiful trees. You hate living in the part of the city where you got lots of leaves in the fall. But that's part of home ownership. I know for those of you that don't have to do these things, <laughs> you're just laughing at me. So we're reading out of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16 today. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Wait a couple more minutes, uh, mo not minutes, but moments, just to make sure everybody's here. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, if you want to find that in your Bible app or in your Bible. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. All right, here's our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. So Jesus said, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deed shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Our devotion writer today is Irene Robinson, and Irene is from South Africa. Her focus verse is actually Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look each of you, uh, let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. And here is her devotion. Our home church recently decided to become a friendlier place for visitors. <laughs> That opening line just kind of cracks me up. <laughs> we were not very nice to visitors, but now we are. As a result, one of our members saw a man on his own whom, he, uh, whom she did not recognize, began a conversation with him, and introduced him to her circle of friends. This hospitality took some courage from, other, from our member, who normally only chats with those she knows. But when it was time to leave, the visitor said to her, I came to church today feeling quite lonely and lost. I was so relieved when you started to talk to me. You have been my angel today. How good is that? 
This woman spread the love of Jesus by making the visitor feel valued and loved through simple conversation. I believe Christians and churches should be the friendliest people and places on earth, but often we are not that welcoming. We tend to sit with our family and friends during the church services and mostly talk with those we know afterward. However, when we commit to welcoming new people and sharing the love we have experienced in Christ, we can show others that they are loved and valued by God. So the thought for the day is, I can share God's love through simple conversation. I have to commend the uh, wonderful people of St. John's because I believe that you are probably, in many ways, one of the friendliest group of people I've ever met in my life. Uh, you go out of the way often to introduce yourselves to anyone who is a guest that comes to St. John's, and you're good at inviting them to things as well. Uh, ministries, learning opportunities, dinner for eight, whatever it might be. And I think that's a great thing for us, and it continues to be something uh, that's noted by people, particularly others that come. Uh, you know, our district superintendent, when he visited earlier this year, he commented on that, you know, how friendly everybody was to him, how well we did at greeting him and making him feel welcome and part of the congregation that day. And, and I appreciate all that you do in that. I think of uh, Tom, or, uh, yeah, Tom and Vicki Johnston. I visited with them um, uh, Thursday morning, and we had coffee together in my office. And they are looking at joining St. John's. Uh, they were members at Village Presbyterian at one time. They've been to a few services out at Church of the Resurrection. They live at about 123rd or so in state line, 127th in state line. But they drive to St. John's because they enjoy our worship style. They enjoy our worship services, and they enjoy you. And they were telling me about Josh and Katie. They sat in front of Josh and Katie a couple of weeks ago, and Katie asked them about joining Dinner for Eight and made that invitation to them because she had recognized that they'd been in church uh, several times. They'd been attending with us for well over a year, I believe. Um, but, you know, people get a chance to meet these new folks and make them feel really welcome. Randy and Deidre Parman and others, you know, we, we had Randy and Deidre um, for our Dinner for Eight group, even though we were only a group for six. Um, we invited them to come to one of ours and they live close to Margaret and I, so they came to the one that we hosted at our house, and they got a chance to to uh, meet one another, and, and they got a chance to meet uh, Bob and Susan Taylor, and they found out that um, uh, Bob and Susan were in the same area um, around Bethany, and that's where Deidre's from, and they had all kinds of people that they all knew. You know, those kinds of things just don't magically happen. They happen because we take the opportunity to engage one another. And I think we need to figure out, maybe in some ways, not only how to do that in church, but maybe with the neighbor around us. How do we be people who engage those um, beyond just the wave at the neighbor across the street? You know, do we take time to stand and visit with them? Do we take an opportunity to share in what's going on in their lives? Take a moment to pray for them on things that are important to them or, you know, take an opportunity to encourage when they need encouragement. We can do so much more, I think, to be light in the world around us. We did not inherit the love of Christ, and we did not become a part of this great community of God simply for us to hide our light under a bushel basket. It's supposed to shine in the darkest places of the world around us. So think about the next opportunity that you have maybe to engage someone. Might be a simple hello as you're dumping leaves at a, a leaf disposal yard, got a chance to do that this morning and, and have a brief conversation. It was innocuous at best, but it was a conversation with the gentleman at the leaf yard. You know, the things that we just have a moment to do. We can walk through this earth. We can be silent. We can say nothing to people. And I think in some ways we'll hide the light that's within us that is Christ. Or we can do all that we can to share that by being people who are just friendly. Say hello. Doesn't cost you anything to say hello, to smile, and to ask someone how they're doing, other than just a few moments of your time. So think about what it means this season to share the love of Christ and the light of the world with anyone that you come in contact with. So, 
thought for the day is I can share God's love through just simple conversations. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to value others, especially strangers. May we show people your love by the way we value them. Amen. Well, great to see you folks. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Hello, Maryland Center, by the way. Good morning to you. Great to see all of you. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow is our um, Cantata Sunday, so our choir will be leading our worship service tomorrow and some wonderful music. Come and join us. That will be at 1045. There will be no chapel service tomorrow, so don't forget that. If you decide to show up at 830, you can come and have coffee with all of us that might be there, but otherwise no chapel service, just our 1045 regular service for the cantata. We'll have that online too, looking forward to that. We'll stream it on our site, and so you can watch it if you'd like, uh, if you can't make it with us tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll be back on Monday for our devotion time. I'll look forward to sharing that with you. I hope God's rich grace and peace are with you, that you might enjoy the rest of this beautiful Saturday, and I'll look forward to sharing that day of rest with you tomorrow that we call Sunday. Thanks, friends.